Mr. President, you were recently quoted in the media as saying that your priority will be to ensure that the DRC organizes perfect elections without any major problems. The Electoral Commission recently postponed the elections, and that's a problem to many Congolese. People want to know, are there going to be elections on Sunday? You should just follow what the Electoral Commission said. The Electoral Commission has stated that uh, elections will take place on the 30th which is next Sunday, in the next two days. And uh, we don't have any reasons to doubt as to where the elections will take place. So elections will definitely take place on, on the 30th, on Sunday. What about the postponement in areas like Beni, Butembo, Yumbi? Many voters there feel they're disenfranchised. And Sadak actually has raised concerns about uh, uh, violence. What assurances do you have that these elections will go on smoothly? I haven't had any any declaration from, from Sadek about violence. But this is an electoral process. In a country with 80 million inhabitants, 2.3 million square kilometers, uh, 400 tribes, uh, 600 political parties, and uh, the list goes on and on. So there was bound to be a number of a number of problems uh, during the campaign, uh, during probably the voting process itself, and probably after. But those are minor issues. The most important point and issue is that uh, we want to make sure that uh, these elections take place, but in a very peaceful, uh, peaceful uh, atmosphere, so that all the citizens. So all the registered voters can go on that particular day to vote. Are you planning a comeback in 2023? Let's talk about that in 2023. Don't cross a river before you reach the bridge, or don't cross the bridge before, before you reach it. 2023 is still a long way away. How would you like China to help the, uh, revive the DRC's economy? China has been um, a partner in this country for over the last 50 years. Uh, there are those who just believe that uh, our relations with China stem back to the last 10 years. No, uh, China has been a partner in this country for over the last uh, 40, 50 years. And uh, we've had quite a number of projects, economic projects with China, especially in the mining sector and construction or reconstruction of our infrastructures. And we are also now shifting our priorities into technology, new technology. Uh, and uh, I believe in the next coming few years, we definitely will have other avenues of cooperation with, with China, especially the cultural, cultural exchange sector with uh, China as a country and the Democratic Republic of the Congo. What would you consider your biggest achievement as the leader of this country throughout your tenure? The biggest achievement has and will always be the reunification of this country. Uh, if we are speaking and talking to you today in Kinshasa, it wasn't the case uh, 18 years ago, because 18 years ago, the Congo was uh, just a name. Uh, the Congo was uh, a multitude of uh, areas under the occupation of a country, occupation of an armed group, uh, until 2001, when we managed to, to reunify the country. And after that, to organize the first elections, that was also, is also an achievement in 2006. And then the second, round of elections in 2011, and we're organizing our third elections in 2018. So apart from that, of course, not only reunification, but uh, we've also managed to, to restart the reconstruction process in this country, which was non-existent. So if you've moved around, and if you find time to move around the Congo, you'll see a number of infrastructures 
that were non-existent 10 years ago, and I hope that this will be the trend. What about your lowest moment? The lowest moment? I always hate to think about the lowest moments. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a positive thinker. I always want to think about what's positive. But uh, we've had our highs and lows. Probably the lowest moments was when uh, the integrity of this country, territorial integrity of this country, was uh, under threat or threatened. The meaning in 2012, 2012, when we had lost uh, the town of Goma and other areas, those were some of the lowest moments. Lowest moments also when you have intercommunal fighting, just like what we have in the areas of Yumbi today, or in Kasai a year ago, those have always been low moments. What, what do you think is the greatest misconception that your critics have about you, Mr. Joseph Kabila? Misconception? Well, there are so many, so many. I believe that uh, on the outset, the biggest misconception was that uh, we were just going to play the role of uh, people who could be manipulated. Uh, that was quite a misconception. Nobody could, nobody is ever going to manipulate the leadership in this country because we we have a vision, we, we are focused on what we want to achieve, uh, and it's a process. Probably a slow process, but it is a process, and uh, we are achieving the objectives that we set to achieve. You came in power at a time when the DRC had lots of problems. There was a conflict that was fought in the East, the economy was in a mess, and corruption was widespread, and you had 17 years to put it right. Your critics are saying you failed. What do you say to that? Well, that's why they are called critics. <laughs> that's why they're called critics. You don't expect a critic to to put uh, a nice word uh, to to put a nice word uh, to you or for you. But in any case, uh, let's look at what we promised. Because in order to judge our action or our failures and our successes, uh, you should look at what we promised to achieve because it's not as if we were bl working on a blank sheet, no. We had a program, we stated what our program was uh, way back in 2001. The first, very first item on the agenda of our program and plan of action was reunification. The question is, have we achieved reunification? Did we achieve reunification? The answer is yes. Second item on our agenda or plan of action was that we wanted to achieve economic stability, monetary stability. Did you achieve or have you achieved that? The answer is yes. Our economy is stable. We have a growth rate that has been positive uh, over the last 15 years, positive growth rate of between 3.5% to 5%. We even went up to 7% five years ago. Our currency is stable, has been stable over the last uh, 15 years. We also stated that we were going to start or restart the reconstruction process in this country. Did we restart the reconstruction process? The answer is yes. I talked about infrastructures that were non-existent over the last 10, 15 years. Uh, those infrastructures are there. And in fact, as we speak, and as we're going to elections, we still have infrastructures that are still being built. Work is still ongoing. So my critics can go to hell. Mr. President, regarding the economy, Yes, there's, there's lots that has been done, like you mentioned, but the people out there are saying, look, it seems to be working for the few, the political class. They're saying many of them have very poor salaries, no jobs, life is very tough for them, 
and they're saying, look, Mr. President, you've been here for 17 years. You didn't improve the system. What do you say to that? Can you believe that that's what the same thing that uh, demonstrators are saying in Paris? Are you aware of that? Yes, you definitely are very much aware of that. Uh, in order to attain economic prosperity for the populace, the majority of the population, there are a number of ingredients that have to work together. <clears throat> one of those is peace. The other one, when you have peace, you attract investments. And when you attract investments, you create jobs. And in the process, when you create jobs, you're creating also wealth. Is it what we've been doing? Yes, that's exactly what we've been doing. Over the last uh, 15 years, we've attracted close to 30 billion US dollars in the mining industry alone. Uh, but the mining industry has its capacity. You, the capacity of the mining industry is not be beyond 500,000 workers for now. But of course, there are other activities all around the mining industry. Our shift now over the last year has been the agriculture sector. And that's where you can empower the majority of our population, which is in the interior. Now that's one. But two, <clears throat> if you want to create wealth and you want to move goods and services from the east to the west, north to the south, and vice versa, you have to build the necessary infrastructures. Uh, there is no state in the world, I don't know of any state, that is able to employ the whole of its population. The state does that through a partnership with the private sector or through the private sector. Uh, so our idea has been to encourage also the private sector by putting at the disposal of the private sector the necessary infrastructures, mainly the roads, uh, the railways. And uh, of course, we started with the airports, modernizing our airports, so that you create the necessary activity that will employ the thousands of people. But talking of salaries, you could have asked me this question 15 years ago, or if you had asked me this question 15 years ago, a university professor in this country, the salary of a university professor when we came into power was less than 100 US dollars. A medical doctor, close to the same salary. Today, it's beyond 2,500 to 3,000 US dollars. Is it an achievement or not? Up to you to judge. Could we have done much more? Probably, if we had had the peace, the security, and the calm that we needed. Unfortunately, we did not have those ingredients. We want to leave those, or we want to have those ingredients into play as we move on. What about the issue of corruption, Mr. President? Some people are saying you have condoned it by failing to punish some uh, of your ministers who have been embezzling public funds. You, there is a difference between what you call punishment and what you call injustice. Uh, we, I currently have here, and that has been <laughs> our our demonstration of how serious we are about corruption. I have a special advisor on corruption here, special advisor on corruption here in my office, and his mission is to track corruption at the highest levels possible and below. Uh, <clears throat> my attitude towards corruption has been and will always be it's an issue that has, or a war that has to be fought by, by all the Congolese people. And not only the president, not only the two or three officials who are charged with that. So do you just arrest someone because he's been accused of corruption? That's what 
you might call injustice. We've not condoned that. But there are a number of a number of cases of corruption that have been dealt with. We probably could have done much more. But as I say, I always say the Congo is a country of a thousand priorities. Corruption is one of the priorities, but the priority of all priorities has always been peace and security. So what's next for Mr. Kabila? Where do you go from here? Well, the sky is the limit. The sky is the limit. I don't believe that, uh, and I don't think that as human beings we should limit ourselves to conventional thinking uh, and conventional ways of uh, dealing with situations. So the, the, the sky is the limit beyond the horizon we'll go. Thank you very much, Mr. President, for this interview. It has been very wonderful talking to you. Thank you. Thanks a lot.